The boys continue their preseason dominance, and that's an understatement from today's game for the Toronto Maple Leafs. They lay an absolute beatdown on the Montreal Canadiens 6-2 at Scotiabank Arena, and proved to 4-1 on the preseason to this point. And when I say flat-out dominance, I mean it was just it was just not fair today. It felt like the Leafs controlled the zone entirely. Every time the Montreal Canadiens got the puck, there was someone glued to him, laying a body on him, be getting a stick in. It's just beautiful hockey from the Toronto Maple Leafs. A picture-perfect game for the most part in today's game. Even though you gave up the first goal of the hockey game, and uh, they, they found a way. A lot of goals from different guys. Guys that we haven't seen goals from, or not the big names. You didn't see Nylander score today. No, Marner scored. Tavares didn't score. Now, Tavares and Marner had two apples today, but either and, and Nylander had one, but... The goals were scored by some of the other guys, some of the guys trying to make the team, guys that are on the team that were seeing a little bit more offensive upside, maybe, maybe than we thought, maybe they were actually going to get. I mean, it is preseason, right? So we don't want to look into it too, too much. But let's break this game down. First period, Joel Armia scores just under three minutes into the first period, and the Leafs are down 1-0, okay? Just, just about five minutes after that, Mitch Marner has the puck. He's heading up to the blue line. He kind of stops just short of it, spins around, sees Nick Rich in the back door of the post. Nobody on him. And he just lays a beautiful saucer right on the stick. And Nick Rich with a nice redirection into the corner. And it's a leaf goal. Richie from Marner and TJ Brody at 8-18 of the first period. They the, tied the game. All right, good stuff. Just over two minutes after that, on the power play, Nikita goes up at the sideboards right about at the... Um, the, uh, the, the, ha the the hash marks? The hash marks of the slot there? I uh, see, guys, this is what... Man, I've been talking so much baseball, i got to get my terms right again. I believe it's the hash marks along the boards uh, of the circle. And Nick Ritchie's standing, you know, at the other side of the circle, just kind of chilling there. You know, this guy somewhat on him, but Guzev gives him it, and you can. Ne it's never a bad idea to fire the puck on the net whenever you get a chance, especially when there's a couple bodies in front of the net. What does Nick Ritchie do? He sees the body. He's like, I'm just going to fire it on there. He does. And he goes in for his second goal of the game. That was on the power play. Brennan Minnell, and he had a game. I want to talk about him later. Nikita Guzev had the second, uh, had the primary assist on the goal at 1048 of the first period. Put the Leafs up 2-1. All right. Great stuff. Now, Belize scores make it 2-2 on the power play at 1632. That's all right. Let's keep going. Okay. And, uh, as I mentioned, it's never a bad idea. Never. Just to fire the puck on with bodies in front. Illy McCann's kind of a bouncing puck. No one can find it, really. And Illy McCann's standing on the circle. He was legit almost on the circle. He finds the loose puck. He just fires it on goal. I believe it hit a body in front. And it finds a way in. Tavares and McNeilander grab assists on the play at 18-28 of the first period. Yeah, it was a five-goal first period. And the Leafs end it, end it with a 3-2 lead. Now, they dominate in shots. But it's only a 3-2 game. Not what we want to see. Let's see some stuff cleaned up for the second and third. And they, they did exactly that. They did exactly that. In the second period on the power play, John Tavares kind of coming out from the behind the net, looking for Nikita Guzev back door. But there's a defenseman right in front. And they're playing that cross seam hard. So who's coming streaking down from the point? Brennan Minnell. Great vision from the young fella. Tavares lays it on a platter for the kid. And he goes down to one knee and absolutely rips it. Past the goaltender. And I'm like, oh, that, oh, oh, that was quite nice. And the Leafs have a 4-2 lead. That was a power play goal from Manel Marner. Tavares grab assists at 11.09 of the second period. The kid impressed me. I want to talk about him a little bit later on. But I, I really liked his game today. And uh, speaking of the young guys, to me, Nurga Chinsev. I mean, he had a great game. Finished off with a beautiful goal late in the second period, 16:52 into the second period, just over just over three minutes to play, and it was beautiful. It, it, this is this is your picturesque type of goal, right? If, if you're if you're a hockey player, if you're a hockey fan, you watch what happened in this on this goal. Mm, beautiful, great exit out of the zone. They weren't pressuring you. Nice tape to tape pass. You enter the zone. Couple quick feeds. Darga Chinsev's about in the slot. He fires it, and it, it's a goal. A beautiful shot from Darga Chinsev. Might hit a stick in front, but you just fire the puck on net. Good things will happen. And uh, Curtis Gabriel. Grabs, his, grabs the assist, and Brett Sini, he had a great game. Those are the assists on the goal. Guys that you don't expect to hear a lot of, a lot from, and they connect on a beautiful goal. And the Leafs are now up 5-2. We were talking about a 2-2 game and not a great first period. They dominate the second, 
and they're up 5-2 after two periods of play. We go to the third period. Brett Sini takes a penalty, but he comes out of the box. Semiano finds a loose puck, gives it up to him, and it's a foot, well, I wouldn't say it's a foot race, but Sini has the puck, and he's kind of neck and neck with the defender, but the defender is gassed. He just killed a penalty. Sini's been sitting for two minutes. He's ready and round to go. He blows by him and cuts towards the net, and a beautiful, absolutely gorgeous forehanded backhand to cheese from Brett Sini at 4.37 of the third period, putting the Leafs up 6-2. And that's all she wrote. Like I mentioned off the top, flat-out dominance from the Toronto Maple Leafs in this game. 44-22 in shots on goal. Enough said. You know, I've always thought, you, you can go back to previous videos in the past years and I'll say, well, shots on goal is a meaningless stat. Yes, but when you win by 22... It's a little lopsided. If you win it by like five, it's like, well, they didn't really dominate or anything. But 44-22 is a pretty damn big, sizable margin. Power plays, Leafs were two for four in the power play. And the power play is buzzing so far in the preseason. But let's have, let's have this continue throughout the regular season. I don't mean halfway through just forget how to score. I mean full 82, let's be in the top five in power play the entire way. None of that, number one by an absolute mile, you end up top 10. He's like, no, 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 none of that nonsense. This team can score at will. They have the talent to do so. Don't damn it, find a way. Especially when you have an extra guy. They were great today, two for four on the power play. And they held Montreal one for five on Montreal's power plays. So a great job overall by the Leafs special teams unit. They've been very good so far in preseason. Peter Morazic got the starting goal for the Toronto Maple Leafs. He played the entire game. Two goals on 22 shots. In the first period, yeah, he wasn't the greatest. I mean, obviously, one of the goals was a full-on screen in front. He might even hit something in front. Uh, so you can't really blame him too much for one goal. But, again, two goals on 22 shots. At one point, I believe it was like two on seven shots. So it wasn't pretty. So do the math, guys. Say at least 15 consecutive shots to end the game when the Leafs had a 2-2 tie or a 3-2 lead. He played some fantastic hockey, made some big time saves, and uh, was really sound in the net. I will continue to harp on uh, being positionally sound and calm, cool, and collected in the net. I'm going to use a guy that Leaf fans are very familiar with, and they really enjoyed having around, and he actually just retired recently. Curtis McElhinney. That was a guy that not only did every Leaf fan love him because he put up great numbers, I personally, and probably the diehard fans who watch it in depth, he was so calm. In the, you never saw McElhaney down and out of position. And if you did, it's in the back of the net. But it didn't happen very often. He was very, very calm in the net. Whenever there's a loose puck, he's always trying to track it. He's not kind of down and trying to scramble and be big. No. He's trying to find the puck, be, be big in the net, but stand up so he can move around. And that is what we saw from Morazic in the latter half of this game, in the second and third period of this game. And throughout his... You know, the shutout in his last outing. He was really, really good. I love what we've seen from Campbell. I love what we've seen from Peter Morazic so far with the Toronto Maple Leafs. This is very, very nice. And this is a great thing. When you can have two goaltenders that you can trust on any given night, you'll play the runs. If Morazic wins four or five in a row, you'll keep running them out there. You now, Jack Campbell, you know, you win five in a row, you'll keep playing. Just go out there and do a job. You know, both these guys have been have never been solidified number one starters. So they're trying to fight for that. You go out there and you play well, you're going to play the next day. You're going to play the next game. So it's great to see. Now, let's get to some names here. And as I mentioned, there were a lot of guys that you didn't really expect to put up to put up the numbers today. Nick Ritchie had a couple goals in this game. We've all kind of, and I, when we signed him, I, I said he's not a JVR finesse type of guy. He's not going to be in the, in the crease doing between the legs stuff. He's not going to do any of that nonsense. But he will be there and he'll be a big body. The question is, can he finish in tight? That's where you need him to be with play alongside guys like Marner and 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 and, and Austin Matthews when he plays. Like that's where you expect Nick Ritchie to be. Plant his rear right in front of the net and be greasy, banging those loose pucks. And, and you saw it today. You know, obviously with one slot shot, hey, you'll take that any day. But the first goal, that's going to be a Nick Ritchie type of goal you're going to see a lot of this year. As I mentioned, Brett Sini was phenomenal today. Had a goal and an assist was flying around the ice. Beautiful to watch. Great job for Brett Sini today. And Manel. I mean, Brennan Manel was fantastic. The vision by the kid, a right shot defenseman. I didn't realize he was he was damn good in the KHL last year. It was in the bet, it was like the Belarus League. But either way, he he was fantastic. He'll probably get that. I don't know if he's on a PTO or what. I don't know if he gets signed to an AHL deal or whatever the case may be. But 
Very impressed with Brennan Minnell today. John Tavares had two assists. Mitch Marner had two assists. And the Leafs are now 4-1 and one in the preseason. I believe they play seven total, four Montreal, three Ottawa. I, I'm pretty sure that's how it's going to go. And uh, speaking of those Ottawa Senators, though, the next game of the Toronto Maple Leafs is on Saturday at Scotiabank Arena against the Sens. 7 o'clock puck drop there as the Buds look to continue on their preseason roll and just tune-ups before the regular season. Obviously, cuts will be made. Nick Robertson got sent down today. And every Leaf fan, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to explain something to you, okay? Do I like myself some Nick Robertson? Of course I do. Now, I said in the preseason preview that I expect him to dominate this. He didn't. Like, other than the last game where I brought him up, I never brought him up any other time because he didn't really stand out. Guys like Brett Sini, Curtis Gabriel, you know, uh, Brennan Minnette, those guys have stood out to me and a lot of Leaf fans. That's why they're on the ice tonight. Nick Robertson got sent back to the Toronto Marlies. you got to remember, though, he did have a lot of injuries last year. So he had a tough season in that sense. Maybe they want him to play half a year with the Toronto Marlies, dominate, and then make the, make, make the squad and, and, and put in the work at the NHL level. I don't know. But in the end, he didn't do enough for me personally to crack this lineup. The name is beautiful. The prospect, where he lands on our prospect list, yeah, it's gorgeous to look at. And to know he's right there, Absolutely. But did he impress you enough to make the team out of camp? Absolutely not. And that's nothing against him. It's the fact that he hasn't played a whole lot of hockey over the last little while. So it's going to take him some time, but he will be here at some point. Just a matter of when. All right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and enjoyed the game this evening, because when you beat win 6-2 against Montreal, I know it's, it's preseason. I don't care. Watching this team win a game after we witnessed in like, what was that, June? Uh, May? Whatever the hell that was. Yeah, I need a win here and there. I don't care if it's preseason because it was fun to watch. All right, smack the like button if you guys are over there. The subscribe button if you haven't already. Comment down below. Thoughts on the video, thoughts on the game, what you like, what you not like from today's game for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Twitter is down below for myself. Follow to me, down below that great stuff. The Instagram link is down below as well. So follow up there if you have not done so already, guys. And I will talk to you, Raptors edition, Thursday. Thursday. They're in Philly taking on the Sixers. There we go. I remembered that. And as for the Toronto Maple Leafs, Saturday at home against the Ottawa Senators. 7 o'clock puck drop there. By the way, that video will not be here. I will be in a hotel. It's same with the Thursday Raptor video. So just letting you guys know now that that is what's going to happen. Alright, so thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll talk to you guys then.